So draft day is here. The Rams don't have any first or second round picks. So how exactly do you spend your time when you don't have any picks? You are locked on Rams, your daily Los Angeles Rams podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks for making Locked on Rams your first listen every single day. My name is Travis Rogers. Not only do I host Locked on Rams, I'm also the pregame and postgame host for the Rams on their flagship station ESPN 710 right here in Los Angeles. I've been doing that since they came back into L.A. way back in 2016. And what a ride it has been along the way. Make sure you click that subscribe button on your podcast feed so you get Locked on Rams every single day, your team every single day. And, of course, check us out on YouTube as well, Locked on Rams, our YouTube channel, where we will post videos of this podcast every single day along the way as well. Got a good one for you today. Uh, We want to talk a little bit about something that Sean McVay talked about coming up in the draft and some of the rookies that they anticipate getting and how quickly they may see some time uh, on the field in the upcoming season. I want to talk about that movie that the Rams put together too. Apparently they don't have any first or second round draft picks, but they had some time to put together one of the more amazing viral videos that you're going to see anytime. It was, uh, it was everywhere a couple of days ago, but here we are. It is Thursday. It is the day of the the draft, right? That I, I think a lot of people, certainly casual football fans, when they think of the draft, they think of the TV show that's taking place on Thursday night and an opportunity to, you know, kind of not just see who goes where for the first 32 picks, but rather, you know, the the show, right? The the Roger Goodell walking to the podium and everything else. And that's the big part of the draft that people watch. Where the Rams are going to do some work inside this draft are the parts where people have long ago checked out. If you're listening to this podcast, odds are you're probably a little bit more than a casual fan. You you're looking at this a little more seriously, a little more in-depth than some other people. And that's where the Rams make their money, so to speak. That's where the Rams have found all sorts of valuable assets along the way. Uh, and that is in the later round. So let's just kind of get right into what I expect them to do once they start making those picks. They don't have the first pick, or I should say they don't have their first pick until pick number 104. So if you just do some simple math, there are 32 teams, three rounds makes 96 picks. So It's not a fourth round pick. It's not a third round pick precisely because it doesn't come in the first 96 rounds. But what it is, is it's a compensatory pick, right? There's that little sandwich round where they'll slide you into, even if you don't necessarily have a pick the way that the Rams don't. But it's pick number 104. They've got picks in starting at 104, and they have eight picks total in the draft. But the very, the highest one, unless they trade up here in the next uh, several hours along the way, next couple of days perhaps as well, is going to come at 104. So, the draft that as as we're going into it is kind of, it's an interesting draft in, in, in it's funny to, to put it like that because what makes this interesting is that it's uninteresting for the casual football fan there are not a bunch of high profile quarterbacks that are going to come off the board in the the first couple of think about it, a few years ago what is it? i guess it's 3 or 4 or 5 years ago now and the list of quarterbacks that came off the board it was it was Baker Mayfield, number one, and then Sam Darnold came off the board, and it was Josh Rosen, and it was Josh Allen, and it was Lamar Jackson, and just all of these different, who's going to go where, and was Justin Herbert going to go before two, a tag of a lower, is it going to go the other way around, and the quarterbacks always seem to be the guys that get a, t- you know, Kyler Murray, is he going to go number one, is he too small, it's kind of the sexy thing, if it's not that, maybe somebody that scores a bunch of touchdowns, a wide receiver, or the, the franchise left tackle that maybe you're looking at, so guys like that that get a little bit of buzz along the way. There really aren't any of those guys. There will be very good players that come out of this draft. Every year has has players that are good. They're going to end up in Pro Bowls, and maybe if you're lucky, you'll have a you know one or two Hall of Famers along the way. It, 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 do, it certainly happens. But what makes this draft interesting is the lack of the big names along the way. There's no jockeying for number one. You know, the, the last time the Rams had a draft pick in the first round, six years ago, believe it or not, Jared Goff, right? Jared Goff's coming in. It's Carson Wentz. Is it Jared Goff? Is it Jared Goff? Is it Carson Wentz? Back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Kind of the drama that builds up to it, and ultimately you make the pick. You pick Todd Gurley in the first round, Aaron Donald, big, big names. Um, that's not what this is, but where the value is where the interest is this is a really deep draft so just because you're picking 
104, where the Rams are, are, are scheduled to pick as we're recording this right now, doesn't mean that you won't get a good player. doesn't mean you won't get a good player at 125, 200, wh- whatever it might be. There are really good players available later in the draft. Good depth. And what's nice is there seems to be depth at a couple of places that the Rams really have some needs. We've talked about this on the pod before. Yet another reason you need to click on that subscribe button so you get this every single day so you're always in the loop. The Rams have two needs, I think, that are probably superseding everything else. And then, and then a third one, too, that I think is probably fairly close. But the other two needs are, 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 are pretty obvious. If you're a Rams fan, you're probably thinking, you know, you got to go find some, some help at cornerback. you got to go find some defensive back help. Because while Jalen Ramsey has been very good on one side, Darius Williams left. That means there's a starting job open. I know we've talked about Robert Rochelle maybe having a shot at that, David Long Jr., but you're going to need some guys. You're going to need to look at that as probably, in my estimation, the number one point of need that they're going to need moving forward. So I think that if the Rams don't go there very early, maybe if not with their first pick, I'd be very, very surprised. It seems to be pretty well understood that that's the part that they need. Now, Les Snead has also said there are a list of guys that even though miss, maybe when you look at the Rams' depth chart, there isn't a ton of need, and I'll, I'll just throw this out there. You look, you, For instance, you're talking about, you know, to, to say quarterback, right? And I know that they're not going to draft a quarterback high, but just use this as an example. Let's use a different example. Let's use wide receiver as an example because that's probably a group um, that there isn't a great deal of need. And, and this is actually the perfect example because last year you had Robert Woods, you had Cooper Cup, you had um, Van Jefferson – and you had you'd gone out and you found somebody uh, in Deshaun Jackson that you had, what was their first pick? It was Tutu Atwell, a wide receiver. The position that you would think they didn't need the most it was the pick that they spent very first to go get. So obviously they saw something in Tutu Atwell. That's kind of something that Les Snead does. He goes out there and he takes, if there's a guy that he thinks he wants, He's going to go get that player. Go back to Bobby Wagner, who we've talked a lot about on this pod the last couple of weeks and months, that he had that regret, Les Snead did, of I wanted to take Bobby Wagner then. I thought I could get him a little bit lower in the draft, so we took somebody else, and by the time it came back around to us, he was gone, right? It just it wasn't going to happen quite like that. Or they're thinking of trading up to get him because that's a player that they really had their eyes on. They decided they would wait, maybe drop back a couple more picks. He was gone. So they've decided that if they have somebody they really like, even if it's not necessarily a position of need, that's going to be a place that they go. So there's always the chance of a wild card, but I would be incredibly surprised if they decide to go somewhere that is not defensive back. The only other thing that maybe makes some sense and and for their first pick, and again, we're talking first pick in the terms of the 104th pick in the whole draft, but the Rams' first pick is maybe you go for some offensive line depth. That Because Andrew Whitworth retired, because um, we're talking about some guy, Austin Corbett has gone to a different team. The a couple of backup guys, with whether it's Joe Nopum, whether it's a guy um, that is Coleman Shelton that's filling in some spots, you're gonna all of a sudden the depth that you had is gone because they're in the starting lineup. You need to start replenishing that depth along the way. So I wouldn't be surprised if you saw some offensive line help come in as well, particularly at guard. I think that's something that they're going to need to address at some point. And then, of course, you'd like to see somebody else coming off the edge. With Von Miller gone, with some of the guys that we've seen leave in the last couple of years, Leonard Floyd has been very good there. But if you could have another player to go get that quarterback off the edge, I think that would be a very good place for the Rams to go look as well. I'd be really surprised if those weren't the three areas that were addressed in that order along the way. So, when you don't have to worry about the first round, when you don't have to worry about the second round, exactly do how do you spend your time getting ready with all that draft uh, free time on your hands, I guess is one way to put it. The Rams had a very, very interesting answer. That's coming up next. Let me tell you about one of our new uh, partners here at uh, Locked On. I want to talk about BlueNile.com. Blue Nile is the place that you need to go to check out all of the unbelievable jewelry. And because, look, Mother's Day is right around the corner, and you can't tell me that your mom wouldn't love something from Blue Nile. That maybe you're thinking about, look, the spring is kind of the wedding season, right? Maybe you're thinking about making that proposal, or maybe you're already married. Maybe you got somebody special in your life. You just want to get that incredibly unique piece of jewelry. We're talking fine jewelry. We're talking engagement rings. We're talking tennis bracelets, statement pieces, maybe something a little more understated, a little more elegant, a little more classic, no matter what it is, BlueNile.com 
has you covered. And you're thinking, Trav, man, I, I don't know anything about jewelry. I don't know what to put together. Blue Nile can help you with this. They have people that are available to you. Chat, phone, 24 hours. Just go to BlueNile.com and see everything that's available to you. And mark Mother's Day with something enduring. Classic stud diamond earrings. Not bad, right? You think your mom might like that? Elegant tennis bracelets, birthstone pendants, and so much more. BlueNile.com. So birthstone pendants. You got kids? Maybe you got kids? Maybe give your wife something like that to kind of celebrate the birth of your kids? Not a bad way to do it. This Mother's Day, give mom something that she's going to treasure forever with fine jewelry from BlueNile.com. And Locked On Sports listeners, they're going to get $50 to $500 off. This podcast exclusive is only good through Mother's Day. Use the code Locked On. That's the code Locked On. Plus, every order is insured, it ships free, and it arrives in a discreet package that will not give away the unbelievable gift that's inside. Shop stress-free and find your forever piece. Go to BlueNile.com today. And thanks for making Locked on Rams your first listen every single day. And now for a giant announcement for the first time ever, Locked on is hosting live coverage of the 2022 NFL Draft from our studios in Dallas with pick-by-pick -pick analysis from our local team of experts and draft gurus. So tune in all three days of the draft as our team guides you through every pick and every trade in real time. It all starts on Thursday, April 28th. That is at 4 o'clock Pacific. It's available on the Locked on YouTube channel and, of course, the Odyssey app. Okay, so you have a Super Bowl championship. You've got a Lombardi trophy in your uh, lobby that is about, oh, I don't know, two, three months old at this point. You've got a franchise quarterback who appears to be in the prime of his life. You've got the best wide receiver in football. You've got a deadlock cinch Hall of Famer at defensive tackle in Aaron Donald. You've got maybe the best defensive player ever in that guy. You've got the best cover man at corner in Jalen Ramsey. And you've been active in the free agency market. You went out and picked up one of the best middle linebackers in football at Bobby Wagner. And you went out and got another all-pro wide receiver in Allen Robinson. And the cost of doing all of these things, of course, over the years and years and years, is that you keep giving your first-round draft picks away. Fine by me, right? Uh, so, big night in football. Like, it's the Super Bowl. And then it's the draft as far as big nights go. Well, the Rams... They got to participate in the Super Bowl, but they don't really get to participate in the first night of the draft. So... What do they do, right? What do you? How do you spend your time when you know that you're not going to be picking in the top 5, 10, 20, 30, 103? Their first pick isn't until 104, which will come sometime, um, you know, Friday afternoon, late Friday afternoon, probably when they'll finally get um, active in, in the draft. So what the Rams decided to do, and it was great, and the odds of you having seen this already are probably pretty good. They put together a movie trailer. And it was a, a movie trailer that was designed to look like um, the, the trailer for a heist movie. So think kind of like Ocean's Eleven, right? Or is it Ocean's 13 or however many Ocean's people there were along the way. And it's not just like a couple of guys that a high school uh, video uh, audio visual club key and went in and said, hey, we can we can mix this. We got a we got a video editing machine and they didn't make it um, on, on their laptop. They went out and got a Hollywood director. And not just any Hollywood director. They went out and got a guy that's won three Academy Awards along the way. And they went out and got real actors. They went out and got Dennis Quaid to play Rams owner Stan Kroenke. And then they took all of their players, Aaron Donald, Matthew Stafford, Cooper Cup, Malcolm Floyd, uh, you know, Van Jefferson, just all of the guys that you can think of. They're all in it playing different roles in this thing. And it was equal parts really funny. And it was just good. It, it was one of those things, like even if it didn't have Rams players in it, even if the theme wasn't they're going to steal the draft, right? That's kind of the theme of the movie. It was just, it was wildly entertaining. It was just really, there's a car chase, there's a heist, there's casino action. It's just, it's awesome. And it, it looks slick and polished and perfect. And it looks like something that people that work in this town and are very, very good at working in this town would put together. This does. This is not a student film project. This is a highly polished piece of propaganda, I guess, or, or you know, hype video. You know, call it what you want, but it is. If you're a Rams fan, you, you you can't not love it. It's just absolutely terrific along the way. And I was talking about this on my radio show, Travis and Sliwa on seven ten, ten a.m. to one p.m. You should check that out. Um, why? 
why, why is it, <laughs> what are you doing? And so we were kind of kicking it around for a while, like trying to figure out exactly why uh, this was a thing that they did. And I think there's, there's a couple of different answers to this. Number one, they want to be relevant. And, and obviously their relevancy is about as high as it could be right now because you're the defending Super Bowl champions. Going into the draft, people are going to talk about the Rams a lot because of the way that they use the draft. They're using their, their first-round picks as basically an ATM to pay other teams to for their best players. And, yeah, we'll, we'll take Von Miller, sure. We'll take Brandon Cooks. We'll take Jalen Ramsey. We'll take this guy. We'll take that guy. You know, they do, that's how they do it. We, we'll take Matthew Stafford with two first-round picks. Fine, here's two first-round picks. Here's, here's our quarterback. So they're going to get talked about uh, during the draft quite a bit because of the unusual way that they go about approaching it. But you also want to have something for them to talk about that is not just, hey, the Rams aren't picking tonight. They've done it differently. This is a conversation piece. Now, maybe they're not going to spend a ton of time on it, but I can almost guarantee you it's going to come up during the draft. I can guarantee you that it's something that they put out in the universe like, hey, don't forget, just because you're not going to see our logo on the screen, just because you're not going to see Roger Goodell say with the 32nd pick in the 2022 NFL draft, the Los Angeles Rams select blank. They're not going to do that, but the Rams brand is everywhere everybody was talking about that video because it was so good that's one thing about it as well i also think that there's a second element to this too that is important yet subtle the that thing was the the, the trailer the movie was so well done it was so incredibly well produced and clearly made by a team of professionals it was so clearly produced and made without regard to expense, right? It, I mean, Dennis Quaid is in it. Dennis Quaid is a movie star, for goodness sake. He, and he's in some Rams hype video. I mean, come on. That This is something that they went out and said, listen, we're not messing around with anything. Have you seen our stadium? Have you seen the roster of players we've put together? Have you seen our championship trophy? Have you seen our video? Everything we do here is first rate. There is no, we're going to do this on a shoestring. Well, you know, we're going to have to, you know, just, just let's just get it. To everything with their brand right now, everything that's associated with from their head coach, from their general manager, from their stadium, from their record, from their draft hat, everything is first rate and that video falls right in there. And it's just another one of those things that when you start thinking about their brand, when you start thinking about how the Rams have gone about establishing themselves here in LA and go back to when, when I kind of rejoined this podcast way back at the beginning of the playoffs. And we we're talking about San Francisco and how many people were in the building on week 17. And then of course, when they played the NFC championship game, how many San Francisco fans were in the building there? And this question was, well, how do you build roots? How do you grow a team that hasn't been here for a really long time with a group of people that don't have a personal connection with it, unless you're of a certain age, how do you brand yourself in a city where it's all about what it looks like and how good you are. They don't want it. We're not going to show up just because you're here. Well, A, you got to win. Well, they check that box. Well, B, you got to create a brand that people would want to be around. It's cool. It's fun. It's sexy. It's all of these things. And that video is a part of that. It's just another one of their little things that you can put in their portfolio about everything we do here is first rate. And that video is first rate. If that were a movie, I'd go see it. That's how good the trailer was. And, and if it if it were, it, I'm trying to think of another team here. Jacksonville, okay, Jacksonville, Jacksonville puts that video together. You're looking at like, dude, what are you guys doing? What? Come on, man, it's Jacksonville. You don't need it. Come on, nah. I mean, hey, Trevor Lawrence in a video. Stop. Hey, come on, man. It would look. It would. It's ridiculous. But because it's the Rams, because they are in air quotes Hollywood, and because they just won the Super Bowl, you can kind of say, hey, check us out. What do you think about this? I loved it. I, I loved what it looked like, and I loved everything that it represented along the way. Okay, want to get into what Sean McVay is talking about, some rookies. We're going to have a crop of rookies here in a couple of days. How soon might they play? Sean McVay is going to tell us. That's coming up next.
But first, we're going to talk about Bet Online because it's your number one source for all your sports betting information and betting stats. BetOnline.net. Here's what you do you go to BetOnline.net right now. You look at your team before they make that big first round draft pick. And then you go back and look at Bet Online after, after the big first round draft pick. Did the number move? Did it go up? Did it go down? Do they like it? Do they not like it? These are all the sorts of information that you can find. All the latest sports developments, league reviews, and news, including this year's basketball playoffs and the start of the Major League Baseball season. You might want to get down on Mike Trout as MVP. It looks like it's happening again. Bet Online is your continued source for all your sports wagering information from live betting to playoffs, esports, and more. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and action. Bet Online, where the game starts. Okay, so the Rams uh, pick 104 is their first pick. We're talking about them going defensive back. We're talking about them going offensive line depth, maybe an edge rusher. And, of course, the Rams always have the uh, the threat of kind of going rogue and going wild card and taking something you really don't expect. Think Tutu Atwell from a year ago. Um, but one of the things that has made the F them picks strategy so viable for the Rams over the years has been the fact that they've been able to find very, very good players in rounds beyond the first and second round. We, we've gone over this a million times, all the different – Cooper Cup is a great example of this. Joe Nopum is going to be a starter. Brian Allen is going to be a starter. John Johnson, before he went uh, to Cleveland, was a guy they found in the late rounds who turned in to be a starter. A lot of the – Jordan Fuller was a six-round pick and started as a rookie along the way. So if you get drafted by the Rams, even if you're a fourth, fifth, sixth-round guy, there's a chance you could play right away. And Sean McVay was asked about that. When do you think some of these guys might be able to join this team, not just in in spirit, but in body, right? Actually be out there making some plays. And what he said was, I know we feel we're going to come away with some players that will help us a lot sooner than later. And he talked about finding guys that not only fit a need, not only that are good football players, but are guys that fit into the culture of what the Rams are all about. And I don't know if you can really wrap your head around. I know that I struggle with it at times just how difficult that is to project to, okay, I, I need a safety. I need a guy that can run this fast or jump this high or does this shuttle run and this or can bench press 225 X amount of times. That's that's part of it. I, I understand that. But the part that's so much trickier is what is he going to do when he's in with us? How will he understand our organization? How will he understand what we're going to do? How does what he does well help what my other players do well? Does he complement someone else's weaknesses? What one guy over here does not as well, does he do that particularly well? And does what the other guy does over here well, something that maybe my new guy struggles with? You put those two guys together and they can cover for each other and some of their deficiencies. This is something that is really hard to predict. This is something that is incredibly dicey, right? Because if you get it wrong and you look, you can have Aaron Donald and Matthew Stafford and all these guys, but if you don't hit on some of this later round stuff, you've got a bunch of really good players on bad teams, right? You, you, I mean, how often do you see this in the NBA? Guys getting 25, 28 a night, but his team wins 32 games. It, it, it's, it's the football. Matthew Stafford in Detroit for 12 years. Everybody knew the guy could throw the you-know-what out of the ball. So what? You're winning six games a year. What difference does it make? The rest of the team is garbage. You can't put anything around him to make this thing go. That's with high-round picks. The Rams have found a way to make that thing go with low round picks. And what Sean McVay just said right there, I think is a big part of it. Look, we're going to find good players and they're going to play a lot sooner than they may think than you might think, because you know what? They're going to have to, we don't have a ton of options here. We we've got some guys on our roster that can play, but you're going to get opportunities as a fifth round pick, a sixth round pick, a seventh round pick that you might not get anywhere else. And by the way, getting to do that on the Super Bowl champion, getting to do that in Los Angeles, getting to do that on a team that, you know, nobody has a perfect crystal ball, but it's very likely that the Rams return to the playoffs. You could do that on a playoff caliber team. Forget about it. Or you could go to the New York Jets who are going to, they're picking high in the draft this year. Guess where they're going to pick next year? Real near the top of the draft. You know how I know that? Because the year before that and 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 the year before that, they're picking in the high in the draft. because They don't know what they're doing. Jacksonville, Detroit, Cleveland. These are teams that Cleveland's finally started to dig their way out and then they crashed and burned all over again. But the point being, if you know how to do these things, if you know how to execute things and get value in places where other teams struggle to find it, that allows them to do all those things at the front of the draft. And hearing Sean McVay say, you know what, these guys are going to play sooner than later. I love it. I absolutely love it. And if you're one of the players that's about to get picked over the next couple of days, 
you would love it too. Thanks for making Locked on Rams your first listen every single day. Now make your second listen Locked on NFL Draft. Ryan Tracy and former NFL cornerback Eric Crocker bring the NFL Draft to life every day with insight and analysis on college football prospects and NFL front offices. It is also free and available wherever you get your podcast. So the Rams are not the only team that has F them picks it. Some other teams don't have first round picks either. How are they doing? That's on tomorrow's edition of Locked on Rams. Until then, whose house? It's locked on Ram's house.